Welcome to the Transcendent Minds podcast, the podcast where we explore the mysteries of the mind and the human experience. Join us as we delve into topics such as consciousness, spirituality, and personal growth with expert guests and thought-provoking discussions. Get ready to expand your mind and discover new insights on this journey of self-discovery. Now here's your host, Peter Michael Deeds. Joining me today is Juanita Ward, a globally recognized Akashic Records healer, spiritual counselor, alchemist, and mystical astrologer. With a profound understanding of infinite consciousness, Juanita guides souls worldwide in unlocking their life potential and embodying their true essence. Drawing from her diverse background rooted in Moldova, Juanita offers transformative guidance to individuals and couples, bridging the gap between the physical and mystical realms. Her holistic approach to healing encompasses various modalities such as Akashic Records, essential oils, crystals, and energy healing techniques like Reiki and Pranic healing. Juanita's dedication to spiritual exploration extends to her offerings on platforms like Insight Timer and the Raising Our Vibration, empowering individuals to release fears and harness the spiritual nature of manifestation. Since her transformative encounter with ayahuasca, in Peru in 2013, Juanita has been a beacon of light for those seeking healing, realignment, and transformation. Whether it's navigating partnerships, business decisions, healing trauma, or seeking harmony in life, Juanita's insights and expertise provide profound guidance for personal growth and spiritual exploration. So without further ado, let's dive into the conversation with Juanita Ward. Your journey began in Moldova, and you talked about where your family instilled in you a natural affinity, a healing affinity for plants and holism, your know, holistic side of life. And from what I recall, that early connection with nature evolved into a multifaceted healing path, and you incorporated the modalities such as Akashic Records and essential oils and plant wisdom and crystals and tuning forks and many other various ancient healing techniques. Can you share a memory from your childhood in Moldova that significantly influenced your journey into the healing arts? I can't say that I have one example because that's something that I reflected over the years to better understand who I am, why I'm here. So it wasn't just one. That I can tell. First of all, it was within my blood from my ancestors. It was this natural curiosity. Also the country that I was born because it was Moldova. So at the time it was Soviet Union backwards, big time. So I've experienced a simple way of living life, making butter because we didn't have a lot of things. So you had to create things. For example, it's also my experience as a child. When, until the age of five, I was very sick. But I was also allergic to antibiotics and insulin. So my mom had to become very creative to treat all the colds. So it was all natural homeopathy with herbs, with heat, with vinegar. A lot of this wisdom of body, energy, it was just part of life. Tapping was very popular. Teas. It was part of life that I didn't even realize that's something that's not normal to me. That was normal. And then my grandfather teaching me, we got a card playing outside, for example. And when I would get a card, he would show me a plant that would and teach me how to put it on the card to stop the bleeding, for example. And he would forage for mushrooms. And there was just a lot of gardening we would eat from garden, canning. And then the healing part was when I was very young, I was born open. Then I shut down. But I was born open and my mom was telling me stories that when she would come home from work and she would have a headache. I already knew I could barely even talk, but I already knew that. So I was like, you have a headache. So she would put me on her lap and I would put my hands on her head and her headache would go away. So it was just very natural and magic. My grandmother was teaching us different magic stuff. And I grew up with tinctures. It was everywhere, but it wasn't a separation from everyday life. And then I shut down because life was not safe. And the more I was growing up by the age of 
or five, five so for a while, and then slowly started remembering because when the soul wanted to remember, when the soul wanted to wake up, then the soul will do anything to get you there. Did that answer your question? It's interesting that you got a real education with natural methods that seem to be very effective for you. And now you're using those methods and probably have refined them and learned more of those things in your practice now. And you landed in the States with $100 in your pocket. <laughs> yes. And I would imagine a sense of excitement and freedom in 2002. And you had a career on the ocean providing the space to explore esoteric topics and delve deeper into physical healing work. And from the conversations we had before, it was during that transformative trip to Peru, I believe, in 2013, that you encountered ayahuasca. And there was a life-changing moment there that led you to discover the inner heart, the inner journey in the Akashic Records. How did your experiences on the ocean shape your ex exploration of esoteric topics and contribute to your physical healing work? Ocean, as, con as you would think, it was so constricted because we're on boats, right? But at the same time, I was free out of the system, out of certain conditioning, free from acting certain way, doing free to explore, even though that I had to still act certain way and do certain things. But it gave me the freedom in my being to, okay, I'll rewind a little bit because it wasn't just that, oh, airy fairy and all was lo lovely and dandy. <laughs> it was not. It was actually on the contrary. By being on a boat, yes, I had the space of the ocean and the sea and the sky and all of that, that many are dreaming. But at the same time, I was actually planted on a boat with water underneath. So there was no grounded. And I was also in a small space. I've never had space till 2017 when I left yachting career. So I never had physical space in my life. That's why I had to go into my imagination. I had to explore, go into my heart and imaginative, create the life, imagine my life, imagine everything, whatever I wanted. So on a boat, it became very challenging throughout years to breathe, to expand. And that was necessary for me to seek deeper healing, to go within, to embody rather than disconnect from myself, find who I am. I'm still finding that because we never finish. It's always exploring. But I, I went through my Saturn return on a boat and that was crippling and necessary. And I will be always grateful for that as it showed. But does it make sense? It was almost like the no physical space and having to work and live with people that were not quite in my highest and greatest, what well, they were, but they were not the nicest, some of them, that it wrecks certain ways within me to allow the healing, to become curious, to become so desperate that as there is something needs to be done, something has to change. That's what got me into searching for spiritual counselors. I started reaching out for help because I was dying. So it was fabulous because I had that freedom to do that. I don't know if that makes any sense, but being on a boat, it gave me that freedom to reach for help. And then ayahuasca brought me to ayahuasca because I didn't know anything about ayahuasca. And then here suddenly I find myself doing a ceremony. And before that, I was in a deep flight fight all my life. So I was a very controlling, controlling because life was always challenging. And ayahuasca, it was a horrible experience <laughs> for ceremony. And I kept going back. That literally went even deeper. Dark night of the soul, like the Pluto, I've got Pluto in the first house. So that Plutonian energy just completely ripped me open. For a few years, it was very intense. But what happened is the following year, my life got so intense, my inner world. Because imagine it's like you cracked and everything's coming out. The Pandora box is open. And it's like, and you're like, wow, well, and you don't have the tools necessarily. And there is deep fear and conditioning. I'm very open in human design. So there's deep conditioning and suppression of myself, deep disconnect from my body and from myself. But I kept going back because there was this inner calling. I kept listening to that intuition, to my soul. So I kept going back to Peru. I went to Peru four years in a row, went into the jungle. I was terrified and I kept going into the ceremony space. I was joking at the time. I was like, this is going to either heal me or kill me. But there was no going back. So it was intense. 
But I stayed with it because that was like looking back. I'm so grateful that I did that because then it became easier. And that's how I met Iowa Akashi Crackers, my teacher mentor. And that she was my spiritual shrink for a few years, for many years, to help me navigate my turbulent awakening. And I chose this experience on a small level. And it was fun. It was looking back. I was like, yeah, absolutely. Because we're here to have these human experiences, all of it. To experience the good and the bad and find the balance within us and the peace and the harmony and the being. And then she offered to learn us the records. And I said, yes, there was like no question. And that was for me to begin with, to really trust myself, to really trust spirit. And in, it's all the modalities are really for us to begin with, bring, to heal ourselves, to bring that balance within us. Then we can share it with others. I hope I answered that question too. The environment you were in on the boat, I know what that feels like from a different perspective, but it's a place where... And I don't know if this is the same for you, but it was like I had to act in one and live in the other. Yeah. It was like prison in a way, but it was like army. It was a very structured like army. Mm. So when we left, it was actually like that. And it feels like I had to have all these downloads and all this cracking and all this intensity. And when I left the yachting industry and I finally was in a house with 15 acres of land, it took me about two years, two years to adjust to life on the land. I didn't know how to live in a house. That's the ugly truth. It was uncomfortable because I didn't know. It was so uncomfortable being in the body. It was so uncomfortable having so much space. It was very vulnerable, raw, and I didn't know how to do that. Then we got pets and all that stuff, so more experiences, but it was just different. That was the beginning of me expanding and breathing. How long were you on the ocean for? I think altogether about 16 years. So a significant amount of time to be able to adjust to being on land. Yeah. And before in Moldova, my mom and I grew up in a studio apartment, so I never had my room. I never had physical space. Mm. And then on boats, small cabin shoebox. I lived in a shoebox till 2017. So that was a big chunk of my life, I'd say. But it was needed. That's the experience. But your mind allowed you, as I was saying earlier to act in one and live in the other, and also to dream, to imagine, to imagine the new life that you could create. And your mind serves as the the gateway, allowing you to transcend between realms. And as I mentioned earlier, it enables you to perform your routine tasks almost effortlessly, given your expertise over 16 years on the ocean. But amidst the structured routine, there exists unmanaged time, which is a space for liberation and exploration. Though you may have felt confined within the constraints of daily life, it is within this confinement that you unlock the boundless potential of your mind. So it's about tapping into that reservoir of creativity and envisioning the possibilities of a new life. Now, you mentioned the Akashic Records and the way that I would describe it from speaking to many other guests about the Akashic Records. It's almost like it's an energetic library that holds the imprint of every soul's journey through time and space, almost like the fingerprints of the universe containing every vibration and connection and frequency. And what exactly are the Akashic Records and why do we need to be aware of them? Why is it so crucial to have an awareness of them? Because Akashic Records is the highest frequency, is the highest frequency of love. Akashic Records. And it's everybody's birth given right to access their own Akashic Records. We are accessing. Everyone is accessing their Akashic Records. So when you have a, a, a problem, you need a solution and you go to sleep and you wake up in the morning with a solution. It is you simply tapping into your Akashic record. Sometimes mm. in, in dream time, it is easier because the walls are lifted. So you're not, your personality, your mind doesn't interfere with the divine connection. Or when you have this gut feeling in your, don't do this or take action here, that's you tapping into your Akashic records. That's the wisdom of your soul and of everything. So you're tapping into your unique Akashic records. And it's essential because it's everywhere. Imagine, you know what fascia is, right? 
So imagine Akashic Records is like fascia within the body that holds everything together, except mm -hmm. this is in ethers. And the more we surrender and the more we allow, the more we go into the heart and just surrender to the divine, surrender to love, embrace these higher frequencies, embrace this harmony within us and allow life to flow, the more we naturally open up to connecting to everything. So the Akashic Records, there's a name for it, but in Sanskrit, Akasha, I don't remember right now, but it's always been there. And people named it differently in ancient times and now, but it is this the energy of love. It's the highest frequency. It's in why do we need it? Why not? That's just life. It's life. That's why I love being in it because I'm breathing it. I'm living it as my friend calls and it tells me, you are it. You are the Akashic Records. Because when you surrender to it, you embody it, you embrace it, then you're present the wisdom because it's always there. It's our birth given right to have access to everything. We're powerful beings that we forgot and we gave our power away. It reminds me of the humble chip nestled within a credit card that dutifully holds within it a trove of vital information. And with a simple swipe, it connects to a server, it reveals a whole mosaic of details about our financial history and credit worthiness. If we look into the realms of ancient wisdom and metaphysical inquiry, and you picture in your mind's eye the concept of the auric cortex, which is a metaphysical field wherein the tapestry of our existence, our history, is intricately woven, and the annals of our personal history are inscribed, which I relate it to the fabled weighing of the heart in ancient Egypt, where the essence of one's life is laid bare for judgment. And in this ethereal domain, I cannot help but wonder and ponder about the significance of our actions and the resonance of those actions within this grand tapestry of existence. And I've always wondered, when I look at children instinctively reaching out, putting their hands up, seeking to connect with unseen energies. So do we, in our quest for meaning, we seek to plug into this ethereal network where we put our hands up, we're plugging into that auric cortex, we're plugging into that history. You think about the energy that flows through your fingertips and the unseen currents that bind us to the fabric of reality. Are we perhaps tapping into the auric cortex? Are we accessing the repository of all that has been and all that will be? And do we unwittingly contribute to the ledger of our soul's journey? Because I think for far too long, we've relegated the brain to the role of a mere data storage device. And when we do this, we overlook its profound capacity for transcendence. And if I look at the nature of our connection to the cosmos, and when that veil of mortality is lifted and we shed this mortal coil, what remnants of our being shall endure? Will it be the sum total of our material wealth and earthly accomplishments? Or will it be the imprint of our soul's journey indelibly etched upon the fabric of eternity? Because when it's all is said and done, in the end, as we stand before the cosmic scales, it's not the weight of gold that shall tip the balance, but the purity of our intentions and the resonance of our actions with a symphony of the universe. So I think we need to tread lightly upon this earthly plane and be mindful of the echoes we leave behind. Because in this grand tapestry of existence, every thread, every thread is woven with purpose and meaning. What was the most profound or surprising revelation you encountered while exploring the Akashic Records? Before I re replied to that, I wanted to say, because when you said about children raising their hands or people, when you do that, you tap and there's just light. You just tap into source itself, the source itself, because that's Akashic Records, that's source itself. You just tap into that. You say yes. I want to answer because if you say yes, so you tap into that. The more centered and grounded and in your power you are, the more you have effortless access to everything. And the more also I wanted to add that, yes, all the information is there at the same time. It's free will. For example, I can't access if your soul is not giving me permission. 
It's like you don't because that's your power. That's your energy. I don't have permission to access your records. I'll tap into some energy and some information, but not to the extent that perhaps your soul wants me to or something like that. And also when you heal and you purify and you learn lessons, karmic lessons, and grow and evolve, then your Akashic records becomes reorganized and realigned because I've seen it. And now coming back to your question, and I want to share that because also, because for the first few years of me studying Akashic records, I was not connecting. I thought because I was expect had this preconceived idea that tapping into the Akashic records should feel like this because I was listening to others, everybody else's experience. That's an example of giving your power away. For some reason, that wants, I want to share that to when I had that aha realization that was happening. I was actually preconceived idea that I should be feeling this, I should be feeling this, I should be having this experience. And in fact, I was very expanded and open already without even realizing that. And then when I had that and then I just tuned in, I was like, wow, I'm actually connected to everything. My energy field is very expanded and I'm different. I feel different. I, it's just I'm me. Just stay here. Do me. Explore. Be curious about me. The oneness. I love being in the space because in the space, when I open up either session, it is the oneness. It is the connection to everything. It's just the body feels light. Your spirit feels light and everything is one. Everything is connected. Drama stops because the soul comes in, the light comes in. The mind comes down because just suddenly it's just this present moment, all is well. So I love being in the space. I choose to be there. Even I actually choose to be in the space the more you practice being in the heart and the space because that's in the heart, right? Mm. I choose to be in that space. Even when I drive, even when I go grocery shopping, even when I do this human day-to-day experiences, right? I'm having this with people that are not even slightly familiar with even the name of Akashic Records. But it's because I am choosing to embody it. I'm choosing to feel it and expand it. I'm choosing to radiate this energy, frequency out of my heart. I know that everyone that is around me, it's this ripple effect. And I love seeing people, I feel good. Just smile, putting a smile on their face, just making them feel better about who they are. It's just so good to do that and to feel that. I think it's fascinating to ponder the profound impact of putting a smile on people's faces because it evokes the timeless principle of service, of extending oneself for the betterment of others. And to me, that represents one of the loftiest pursuits in this vast universe to serve others and to carry within oneself that inner radiance, that inner smile. But cultivating the spirit of service and maintaining the joy requires work, requires diligent nurturing and constant attention. Now, some argue that delving into the depths of these records can offer profound insights and guidance and even healing. And over time, I've had numerous discussions with guests who claim to have experienced transformative shifts and personal growth through their connection with the Akashic Records. So I'm curious to hear from you, how has accessing the Akashic Records positively influenced your spiritual journey or personal development? And has it provided you with valuable insights or perhaps guided you along unexpected paths of growth and self-discovery? That's a very easy answer because connecting, that's absolutely transformational. So imagine this Akashic Records is this high frequency, right? Or like in regular terms, it's like a penthouse. And then you are in the basement kind of thing, or you're in the like second floor or whatever. So you're connecting to the penthouse energy, probably not a good example, but let's say the Akashic Records is your soul. It's your soul's wisdom. Start there because that's how you receive it. And then through that, you just access everything else, whatever is in your highest, because everything is there. All is one. We're all connected. Everything is alive. And it's a one thing. There is no separation. When you cultivate being, first of all, in your body, centered, grounded, being in the body is very important because the more you are in the body, the more light 
there is, the more you allow the soul to be here, the more you allow the soul to come down into your body, the more you cultivate awareness within the body, the more you are guided by the soul. So when you're guided by the soul, life becomes amazing. And the more you allow light into the body with practicing awareness, body awareness, love, all the good stuff that everybody knows, right? But really practicing, really allowing yourself to love yourself, allowing yourself to be in the body, allowing yourself to accept yourself unconditionally. That's a journey. And bringing the awareness, the more you bring the soul in. And with that, the logic mind, the transformation is this linear way with the mind. With the intuition, when the soul drops in, the transformation is instant. That's how simple it is. It's instant. Then the integration takes place because with the integration, we have to let go. You have to let go. Experiences, people, stories, the unwinding. That's when people go to different healers. It's the process. It's the journey. It's like when the soul drops, the drama stops and the house gets cleaned. You know the story of the seven, I don't know even why, I'm, the seven dwarfs and Cinderella. Was it Cinderella? No, no why? Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And that is actually a very esoteric story. Two of those stories are nursery rhymes, the whole lot. Yeah, they're all, so when they're all the esoterica. Prince, so exactly. So when the prince comes and kisses the Snow White, that's the soul comes into the body. And then what does Snow White? She wakes up, so that's the awakening, and starts cleaning the house. Because all the seven dwarfs are all the seven chakras. Sneezy, that's like the Ajna. I can't remember the names, but they're like, they all seven chakras. What do you do? Like after a very big, let's say, weekend, like healing experiences or ceremony or something, you notice, so pay attention to your experiences. Like suddenly you're cleaning the house, whether your body or you're actually cleaning your physical house because you're moving energy. You're upgrading the operating system or your energy of your body, of your life. It's fun when you have the awareness of like presence, cultivating presence and awareness is essential. What comes to mind is that, first of all, the view from the penthouse is always better than from the basement, right? Especially if you've got that ocean view. But I just want to complicate your life a little bit. Is that okay? Yes, absolutely. There are plenty of skeptics out there who will argue till they're blue in the face that the whole idea of Akashic Records is just a bunch of hooey. They'll tell you it's all based on metaphysical mumbo jumbo with no scientific backing whatsoever and what is their main beef they doubt the reliability of the information that you can supposedly dig up from these records they say it's all too subjective it's influenced more by your personal beliefs and interpretations now i'm really curious especially since you're knee deep in this practice I'd love to know what your take on it is and what kind of evidence or experiences have you come across that either support or challenge the existence and trustworthiness of the Akashic Records? That's not a scientific because you can't explain it. Very scientific, you can do it, and I'm not a scientist. But what I can share is that, yes. Because how do you differentiate yeah. between genuine insights mm -hmm from the Akashic records and potential misinterpretations or biases in the information obtained? Exactly. But that's actually easy to answer. So first of all, it takes time. It's practice of, of me. For example, I'm a practitioner. And also it is being neutral. It is being authentic. And it is for, for the practitioners, it's important to do the work, to go deep. Because there is a lot of people, healers, practitioners, that they reach a certain and they stop growing. Mm. They identify themselves with this and then they start filtering. And it's my personal observation on that because of what I've seen. What I've felt and I've seen is when they stop, they start causing stagnation because we never stop growing or evolving. We're students of life. That's our soul's experience. Because what I've found for myself is the more I go deeper into my own healing and exploring. It's like I go down the rabbit hole. So it's all about cycles. So it's complete a cycle, then I go even deeper. So there will always be something to purify and upgrade and cleanse and heal and integrate and grieve and celebrate. There will always be that. So the way when these practitioners show up, 
and then the information comes pure, but it is comes through the filters of their eyes at the same time. But you feel different when it's genuine. You feel different mm-hmm. because it just drops and the person resonates. It's a different frequency and it drops right into the heart of the person. It resonates on a soul level. The soul recognizes, the heart recognizes. The more authentic and present and the practitioner is, the more you lay neutral. The information comes, you are the vehicle. I'm the vehicle. I'm just simply here to bring this information for the person and see their radiant smile and like the blossoming of the heart and empowering people. Of course, I can come and I can bring my own opinion. But if we just not do that, and if I would do that as well, that would come from insecurity, from my own insecurity, from the flight fight, from unprocessed and unhealed parts of me. I'm not saying that I'm already healed and all that, but I'm aware of things. So you're very present and aware of, and I practice and I like pull myself out of the picture as much as I can and bring that in and whatever is coming through. And a lot of the times I don't even remember the details of the session because that was information was not for me. And it's felt because the person feels it in the heart. I don't know if that answered your question because scientifically, I don't know science, but I know what I know. What I see, I'm told, and the heart knows the truth. The heart knows the truth, not the mind. And the heart is the best. So whenever you want to know if something that you heard about yourself or some information came through or something came through, hold it in the heart and you will Uh, know if it's true or not. In our previous conversations, you mentioned that you guide individuals into their Akashic records through sacred ceremonies. And you've emphasized the importance of creating a sacred container, connecting with an open heart and setting intentions for each session. And in these sessions, you explore the energies of individuals offering clarity on life, work, business, spiritual paths, challenges, hopes, dreams, and probably much more. But in guiding individuals through the Akashic Records, are there common themes or challenges that you often come across? And how do you address them? Opening up the sacred container, or let's say it's sacred space and calling in, I find it very important for the lower nature, for the body. So it doesn't put up walls for the heart to relax, for the body to relax. Because body doesn't like change. The lower nature, the ego, the human, doesn't like change. It doesn't matter if change is good or bad. Even changes can be phenomenal. But the body, the human, the lower nature does not like change, perceive it as, as death. And I'm bringing this because that's quite important. It was an eye-opener for me and a very helpful tool to be present throughout my life for me and in, in sessions. There's an example when you, okay, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to eat healthy, and this is for you. And you feel great. And you do it for a week or two. And then suddenly you get this voice, not today, not tomorrow. That's what happens because the change happens too fast, too quick. And the body goes, we want to stay there because that's comfortable. We know that this is good, even though it wasn't healthy, but body's comfortable with that. Makes sense. So with, with Akashic Records, with the session, the sacred container, it is yummy because I can call in guides and whatever's being, sentient beings to be present. And it's a very loving, it's like you're with your best friends and your favorite people in the entire world. And you're having a tea around the fire and you're exploring the deepest truths and deepest desires. Sounds and like cosmic yum. Yes, it is a cosmic yum. And the biggest challenge what I've encountered was... That's why I I always invite my clients to just show up, relax, an open heart, an open mind. The more open they are, the deeper the experience for them. The more closed off and shut down they are. That's the challenge. We can't go deep. And they always receive what it's in their highest and greatest. They always receive what they need. But that I found like me and Pluto in the first house. I have to trust that people come to me at a certain level of their readiness. So that's the challenge. And sometimes I had a client recently and she, I would say, doesn't believe much, but there is something has happened in her life that she came for a session. And there was a lot of healing, clearing the energy, meditation, a lot of that. Everything is possible because it doesn't really matter. It's like starting saying yes. And she showed up 
and we did this and if she ever comes great if she doesn't it's like the moment in time the soul contract she received that so she's processing and moving forward in life i don't know if that makes any sense to you Yes, it does make sense to me. There's this invisible fellowship, this gathering of unseen forces that we can tap into. Sure, we've got our traditional methods of physical healing, slapping on herbal remedies or popping a pill, but there's something much, much deeper, something unseen that can work wonders too. I want to tell you a short story about this wild experience I had many years back. I had a girlfriend who had a very nasty pilonidal cyst right at the top of her backside, and they had to dig out a big chunk of tissue, leaving this gaping wound open that needed to heal from the inside out so the tissue could granulate across. So I decided to try something a bit unconventional. I started dabbling with colour therapy. Now, I wasn't armed with any scientific studies or fancy metrics. I just went for it. I had an understanding of it, but I just went for it, using the colors to channel healing energy into that wound. And you know what? After a couple of weeks, the visiting nurse swung by and she was floored by how quickly that tissue was regenerating. Was it some innate healing powers? Who knows? All I know is I was knee deep in energy healing back then, drawing on mental ports and channeling whatever mojo was needed. I didn't even mention my color therapy experiment to the nurse. But within six weeks, that wound had healed up way faster than expected. And it's moments like these that make me realize there's this whole gathering of healing forces out there just waiting for us to tap into. But I think we have to be careful because it's not you can snap your fingers and it happens. You can't expect miracles. You've got to do the work because God cannot live in a garbage can. You've got to be a clean channel, a clear straw, ready to let that healing energy flow through you. Yeah. And that's the thing, the challenge people not open. Like, for example, whenever the session and the seed is planted mm. and many seeds are planted and the clearing is done, the healing, it's always a two-way street. It's like you can take the horse to the water, but you can't make it drink. And the same with people. People, it's important to take responsibility for your life and your healing because I'm not a healer. You're not mm. a healer. I'm simply here to facilitate, to support, to guide, to empower, to remind you why your own healer. You are powerful. You are responsible for your life, your healing, your well-being. You're a powerful creator. I'm here mirroring that beauty and power and serenity and divinity but mm. it's up to the person to actually say okay yes i'm taking this i'm doing it taking action and following the path of doing it but not doing it the old linear way by doing it but by doing it by undoing it and doing it what they've been doing and embrace the heart embrace the divinity embrace the love embrace the unknown and the change and everything that comes with it and being okay, being brave and courageous to be curious about life, to be curious about their life and ask for help, ask for it, because nobody has to do it alone. So we're never alone. There's this fascination alchemy to healing. It's like blending together all these different elements to create something transformative. And from our previous conversations, I remember describing your approach as alchemical weaving in shamanic practices, Tibetan tools, essential oils, and various other techniques. So it's quite the mix. You touched on something crucial during our discussions, the importance of integration after a session. It's not just about the healing work itself. It's about anchoring those energies into the body, allowing them to flow and merge seamlessly with our being. And then, of course, sealing the sacred container with an invocation or prayer, bringing closure to the process. So I'm curious to hear about a specific alchemical process or technique that you found particularly effective in your healing sessions. What's been your method for stirring up that healing magic and facilitating profound transformation in your clients? 
I'm smiling now for the ones that can see it, right? <laughs> what is alchemy? Alchemy is magic. So the more I get my head out of it, the deeper the soul guidance is and the more powerful and deep the experience is. It's like a quantum. So to be honest, I have no idea because this is not something that I can put into words. I bring also astrology, human design, jinky, but it's a different approach, different language. And some sessions, I don't even go there, which is going deep into the shamanic. And the shamanic is like the soul wisdom because we've all been everything. So it's just a matter of trusting and allowing the heart, allowing the heart, because everything is here. Everything, all the wisdom is within us. So when I show up for the session, that's why I love doing what I'm doing, because when I show up for the session, I just show up. I just show up. And then I allow whatever is needed, mantras. I work with essential oil, but in a very esoteric way, perhaps. Or I've got my ponder feather. I've got Tibetan relics like dorges and purbas and the stuff that will helps move the energy, helps cutting cords, purify. So it's like whatever, or mantras or sound or ball or frequency, whatever is needed for the client, for the person sitting in front of me in the moment could be one could be all of it could be just breathing even guiding so it's not like they're just sitting there it's an interaction i'm actually guiding them with moving energy through the body with awareness so i'm practicing body awareness so even if they've never done that it's very interesting because they're actually practicing that and they just look oh i didn't know that oh it's interesting so it's not really a written form i don't follow a list i'm doing this i'm doing that mm. it's almost like we create the sacred space and when I open the records, I just allow, because they always come in. There is initial wisdom comes through. Mm. And sometimes straight into healing. Sometimes they've got a lot to say. The guides, they have a lot to say. And then it just flows. It's such an organic way. And it's such an alchemical and magical way that every session is unique. Every session is different. And it's where a person is in the moment in life in time. And how have these alchemical principles contributed to your healing journey, whether on a physical, mental, or spiritual level? Largely, my personal healing, my spiritual path is very sacred and important to me. Mm. I spend a lot of time connecting and doing a lot of work, my inner work, right? How? By unwinding, purifying, clearing the conditioning, the programming, everything that was separating. It's almost like unwinding and clearing the old stagnation, the conditioning, the programming. I know I repeated that, but it's just very important because we have a lot of that. Any truths, any drama, any stories. I've been working with like projections from others, projections to others, just like all this entanglement and cords and the whole everything it helped hugely. Because imagine you walk into a house and the house is dusty and dirty. How do you feel? You feel the way you feel. You don't feel good. That good. Then you walk into a house and the house is clean and it's a very peaceful energy and it's tranquil and it's harmonious. How do you feel? You don't want to leave that place. So by practicing, bringing these alchemical practices on me, doing that on me, it helped me open up deeper to myself. And only this way, by deepening my relationship with myself and becoming more comfortable being in my body. Because this is a journey. I'm still on the journey. I'm still healing. But by doing that and by allowing this, by accepting myself as I am now, and it just allowed for this soul gifts to blossom within me so I can bring that in service to others, assisting others to tap into their own magical toolbox to become the powerful beings that they are. But yeah, hugely. Gosh. It's almost like all that first phase of my life kind of thing until recent, the last, I'd say, seven years before that, it was necessary. All the shakiness, all the drama, all the pain and suffering in the world. So it was necessary for me to be here now. And I was like, no regrets whatsoever. On the contrary, deep gratitude because it made me stronger and more grateful and more open and more present and deep compassion to myself and others because I just can feel where people are. Your personal journey from arriving in America with $100 and a sense of excitement to your discovery of the transformative power of ayahuasca in Peru is really a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and your teachings on the inner heart and the inner journey in the Akashic Records, I'm sure has touched the lives of many individuals. And I really want to express my deep gratitude for sharing your 
wisdom and experiences today and your presence has really added an immeasurable value i believe to me and to listeners and i really look forward to the continued ripples of your work so i want to thank you juanita for gracing us with your presence and for being that beacon of light in the realms of spiritual guidance and healing and the other thing is that your journey is also a testament to personal growth but it's also an inspiration for those seeking transformation and connection with the deeper aspects of existence so i want to find out more about where can people find you and do you have any parting words thank you very much for saying such beautiful words and it was absolute pleasure and delight to speak with you today and be here today and i just felt kind of ayahuasca i don't think i shared earlier that's just a quick that I adore ayahuasca now, and I have a beautiful relationship with her without even taking the medicine. I haven't mm. taken hundreds of them, but it's just this connection. Once you drink it, it's a spirit. It's the grandmother. They have all their teachers. And I have a beautiful, deep connection and respect and love for her. With her, it's like the more you resist it, the more painful the experience. Like with everything, right? That's with everything in life. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I just wanted to share that. And how people can find me. The easiest on my website, doinitsaword.com, Facebook, doinitsaword.com. I've got meditation on Insight Timer. So my name is on Insight Timer website. And I have a YouTube channel with my friend that we've started also to be an inspiration to others. Yet we started that for our own healing, to become mm. more comfortable with speaking and being ourselves. And that's called conversations with Doinita Word and Edita Palmi. And that's on YouTube and Spotify now. Look at us, we're growing. A few things to share with others. Be yourself. Be curious of who you are. Be in your heart and just follow your own path. Like dance to your own song. Don't compare to others because everybody's on a different journey and you are unique. We are unique. There's no one else like us, like me, like you. So that's the biggest gift. Be yourself. Become curious of who you are and life. Explore the depths of your soul and your heart. That's the best adventure of this life. And trust that when you really embody that and we really fill your cups, you will naturally, all that overflow will naturally radiate to others. And by focusing on you and in your heart and your own healing, just helping the collective because we are not separate. Stay centered, grounded and in your heart. Thank you. Beautiful. It's been an honor and privilege to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Donita. Thank you. Much love. That's it for today's episode of Transcendent Minds. We hope you enjoyed this exploration of the mysteries of the mind and the human experience. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future episodes, we would love to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts. And if you feel inclined, please leave a rating and a review as this goes a long way and follow us on social media to stay up to date with the latest episodes. Thanks for tuning in and until next time, keep transcending your mind.